So I've talked a little bit about cloud security before, kind of going over the shared security model, but I'm actually going to do a little demo on what happens when that cloud security, shared security model breaks down and somebody does something that exposes information they weren't anticipating. So I know I have mentioned Port Swigger Academy before. I really stand behind it as something that is worthwhile uh, for checking out. And in this case, I looked up some of the most common vulnerabilities that come up in cloud environments. And one of them is OS command injection. Now, again, what that means is that we have a vulnerability here that allows somebody to upload or inject information into our server that is going to be passed on and not sanitized properly. So that means us sneaky hackers can intercept the uh, the web request that's going from us to the server and modify it in ways that allow us to potentially get it to give us information it's not supposed to, or even give us full control over the underlying operating system, which for a hacker is kind of the best case scenario here. So if you want to follow along, this is the uh, OS command injection simple case lab on the Port Swigger Academy. I have not covered this one before, and I think it's really cool because it goes to show if you know a little bit about Linux or command line, then you can really get a lot done here. So all right, if you want to see what it looks like, I can click on access the lab. And in this case, we can see our vulnerable web application. And we can click around here, but if I go to view details, I can see that the particular thing we're interested in is this stock database checker. So I can click on check stock and a web request goes out and that web request allows us to uh, potentially modify what's going on in the back end by putting in some variables here that break the system that's set up. So there's lots of ways of checking this out. I think like one of the easier ways is I can hit inspect. Wow, that's a lot. And then network. And then, so if I send another request here, I can see a packet goes out. This is a post request. And I can see the contents of this request is pretty simple. And this is the actual request that went out. Um, we can see uh, that it's HTTP request, content length. We can see other information. Sorry, there's we can see the refer. Uh, and basically, we're trying to see uh, any information we can manipulate here. So this is just in a regular, a regular web browser. Uh, we can't really manipulate this in the web browser. We would need to um, take kind of an extra step that I don't want to here. So instead, what I would like to do is open up this exact same thing, but in Herb Suite. So let's go ahead and do that and see if we can pass this lab and show off how a cloud vulnerability is actually kind of discovered. Because last week we talked about um, how, actually I actually think it was the week before, we talked about some unique Veronis research using Burp Suite. So let's go ahead and use the community edition and see exactly how that works. All right, so I have this here. This is how it looked when it first starts up. <clears throat> this is the free community edition. And I know I complain about this, but really the constraints only kick in if you're doing brute forcing. Uh, a lot of the other very clever tools you're still able to use. Uh, so I think that's fine. So I'm going to start Burp. Uh, now, there's a lot of ways of doing this, and I see some people using like uh, browser plugins like Foxy Proxy and stuff like that. Um, I believe that is the correct way to do this. However, I uh, would like it to just be convenient. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go into the proxy and click on Open Browser. I bet it will open in the wrong screen, um, but we'll see. Yes, of course it did. So all right, we've got the proxy window uh, in here. Uh, I can now type in the URL of the lab that I want to do, and everything will be intercepted, and I'll be able to see a list of all the different packets that are flowing through here. So I'm going to click on intercept is on, and what this means is every time I post a request, I'm going to have to basically approve it and forward it, and I can also modify it before doing so. So I'm just getting pings right now. I'm going to forward those. That's fine. But let me go ahead and click on view details. And basically, you notice how nothing's happening. That's because I'm proxying everything. So I have to forward them. And here's the get request. I need to approve that. And I'm basically doing this step by step so I can make sure that anything coming from my side, uh, oops, sorry, hit the mic. Anything coming from my side is going to have, um, you know, like any modifications that I want included. So I'm going to uh, continue forwarding them. And now I can see uh, from the browser perspective, I've now gone to the website I was going to, I wanted to go to. Uh, again, it, it will not load until you kind of enable that. So I'm going to click on the check stock. And here I can see exactly what I'm looking for. 
So this is the web request, the post request that has all the information necessary for me to mess with this post request. And at the very bottom, I can see product ID equals one and store ID equals one. Let's say that we identify a packet of interest and here I can take this and I'm gonna forward it, but I can go back and see all these requests that were made. In this case, I wanna do the last request that was made. So in Burp Suite, if we wanna mess with a packet and we decide that it's interesting, we can right mouse click it and then send it to the repeater and then the repeater blinks ominously. So this is the repeater. Uh, what's cool about it is it's kind of divvied up all the different parameters on this side that we can mess with. So if I'm a cloud security researcher and I want to mess with the back end of a server, then I can start kind of messing with these server parameters. So here we can see in the body of the request, there's two different parameters, product ID and store ID, and there's values here. Uh, so I can replace these values with whatever I want. Now, supposing that I know or suspect that a bash script is running this whole thing in the background, so I'm gonna be able to pass a, basically a system command to this, then if I am supplying a variable in a system, in a system command, in something like a bash script, then I can use certain characters to basically end one command and then start doing another command. So an example in bash scripting is the and and character. So, or the uh, or the pipe character is another one. So these commands will kind of terminate one running command and then allow you to chain another command that maybe runs after the first one is done. And that means that we can manipulate an operating system that's not properly sanitizing these commands before it runs them. So if we wanted to do something like this, I could take the variable, uh, the value one here, and instead let's uh, make it uh, and who am I? So the who am I command in Linux is something that will allow us to uh, get the username of whoever is running the system. So whatever user is logged in. So if I press enter, then it will replace a uh, URL formatted version of this uh, and allow me to then send this and get, uh, let's see, who am I? Uh, let's see, there is a, okay, well, first of all, we're getting um, a, an error in our bash script. So already we've revealed that there is a bash script here. Uh, there's an unbound variable, who am I? Uh, extra operand one. Okay, cool. So. If I then need to potentially solve this problem, I might be able to then add a uh, quote here or like a like an ampersand here um, in order to, or a hashtag, uh, what might call it, in order to make it so that the script also comments out the next part. So let me see if that then yields better results. Okay, so what did, what did we do here? So my end result, if you can't see it, I understand it's very small. Uh, and it will not get larger no matter what I do. But, uh, oh yeah, it kind of amplifies it here a little bit. I did, uh, I added the and symbol, and then who am I, the command that I want to run on the on the backend system. And then the pound sign here is basically making all the rest of the script a comment. So, okay, I can run arbitrary commands on this server. Uh, that means that I'm able to touch the backend operating system and start messing with it. So I also could run this on the second ones because I'm kind of like canceling out the second part of the bash script that's trying to like get stock information. But essentially what I'm doing here is I'm taking this post request that is supposed to interface with a to get the current stock uh, amount of a, a particular item. And instead I am commenting out the second part of the bash script and running arbitrary system commands. So let's say that I want to learn more. So I can type LS and now uh, instead of running the first part of the script or the second part of the script, it is just going to run the ls command and return it. So ls allows us to list various files that are in the same directory. And in this case, we can see stockreport.sh is the file that's in this directory um, that we have access to with this uh, command injection. So if I want to then see what's inside this bash script that we're up against, I can actually extract the script that is running in the background on the server with this uh, exploit. So let me go ahead and type um, <clears throat> cat stockreport.sh. <clears throat> now the idea here is we've identified that there's a bash script running in the background. If I send this, okay, here we go. Um, we're using the cat command to output the the contents of this bash script. So we can see the entire bash script, which by the way is vulnerable. 
So we use this command. <clears throat> sorry. We use this um, OS command injection to basically rummage around in the back end and figure out exactly what script is controlling uh, this web application. So super fun lab. I thought this was just enough for me to learn how to use some of the primary features of Burp Suite, specifically modifying the uh, the various uh, like variables in the post request. So by capturing the post request, messing around with some of the variables and trying out some really simple commands like OS injections, who am I to prove that you have access and then listing files. And then finally extracting the bash script that's actually running the entire server. This demonstrates how when you have something like the shared responsibility model, if someone chooses to run an application in an insecure way, it could end up granting access to the underlying operating system and make it so that hackers can extract all sorts of stuff. So this is a pretty severe vulnerability. Like this obviously has like unsanitized input. There's lots of stuff wrong with this. But in the scope of cloud security, like this is a pretty common misconfiguration. It's something that versions of this happen all the time. So we're going to do more different security labs. I wanted to do one where I'm actually using the tools. But if you're just getting started with uh, Zap or Burp Suite, then this is a great lab that I really recommend. So check out Port Swigger uh, Academy for this specific lab. It's free and you can check it out and it works most of the time.